Now, when you think of coffee, you might think of a milky, sugary frappe of some sort. You might think latte or a cappuccino. They're everywhere these days. If you think that's normal, sorry folks, you're wrong. In most other areas of the world, cultures actually get the benefits of coffee because they don't add anything to it, including milk. Now, there's two reasons you're actually drinking coffee. Caffeine, that's probably obvious, and the polyphenols in coffee, which may not be obvious. Now, coffee, because of the caffeine and because of the polyphenols, helps uncouple your mitochondria. And I've written an entire book about how important it is for your health to uncouple your mitochondria. Basically, make your mitochondria work less hard and tell your mitochondria to divide and make more of themselves to share the workload. That's what uncoupling does. And caffeine and the polyphenols in coffee are both great ways to do that. The other recent evidence is that polyphenols are actually some of the favorite food of your gut buddies. And the more polyphenols that you add to your diet, the more diverse and happy your gut buddies become. So polyphenols are actually a prebiotic. Now, unfortunately, when you add milk to your coffee, the proteins in milk bind to those polyphenols, and they're unfortunately totally unavailable to feed your gut buddies. They basically become worthless. So what do you do? Well, let me give you an example of what not to do that's actually staring us in front of our faces. There are several cultures that add milk to tea, like the British. And I trained in London for a year, so that is something they do. And there are several cultures that do not, like the Japanese and Chinese. Now, only the Japanese and Chinese actually get a benefit from the tea because the milk proteins have not bound up the polyphenols. Sadly, the British have lousy longevity, and the Japanese and Chinese have fantastic longevity, and one of the factors is the fact that they're not binding the polyphenols in their tea. Sadly, it's even been shown that this affects blueberries that you mix into yogurt. Binding the blueberry polyphenols with the yogurt makes them, unfortunately, useless. Now, some people will tell you that adding milk helps to prevent staining of their teeth due to the polyphenol binding. Please do not listen to this. In this case, staining your teeth is a good thing. And if you're super concerned about it, just use a straw or brush your teeth or do an oil pull after you drink your favorite beverage. Now, America loves coffee. If you must add a creamer to your coffee, use something like coconut milk creamers or macadamia nut creamers. But buyer beware macadamia nut milk, and I won't mention the brand, now has added pea protein to make it more creamy. And as you probably know, pea protein is loaded with lectins. However, there are some macadamia creamers, not milks, that don't have that pea protein added. So read the label carefully. Coconut milk is always a great idea because it will not bind to those polyphenols. Now, I see far too many people trying to be dairy-free and adding almond or oat milk to their coffee. Quite frankly, they're destroying their gut and their health. Now, why? Because almond milk, unfortunately, is made from the peels, with the peels and the whole almonds. The peel actually contains a lectin. And as I've written about before, and you'll see in the new upcoming book, that almonds and almond flour are some of the most 
food sensitive producing compounds that my patients react to. Sorry about that. But what about oat milk? Well, oats and oat milk have become trendy. But I urge you to go on the internet and look for a recent YouTube posting of a young woman who was wearing a continuous glucose monitor and went to Starbucks and or had a oat latte and traced her blood sugar levels. They shot through the roof and then a half hour crash down into the 40s or 50s and she literally had to be woken up from her nap. So this stuff is just pure unadulterated poison, sugar poison, and as I've released in previous videos, oats, even organic oats in this country, have levels of glyphosate, Roundup, and another cancer-causing chemical in them, according to Consumer Reports and the Environmental Working Group. It is not a healthy option. If you gotta have a creamer, use a coconut milk or macadamia nut creamer that virtually has no protein. Or look for a number of the popular MCT creamers out there which don't use, for the most part, these problem makers. Now, interestingly enough, as you know, I spend a lot of time in Italy, and I've always been fascinated that the Italians may have a cappuccino in the morning, but almost all baristas will cut you off from cappuccinos about 10 o'clock in the morning and only agree to serve you espressos or, if you must have a little foam, a espresso macchiato. Now, a macchiato in Italy is just a little dollop of foam on the top. It is not the crazy macchiatos that you get at a place like Starbucks, which is this sugary, ridiculous drink. So, even the Italians understand that they really don't want to mess with a good thing for most of the day. Now, some of the world's longest living people, people with the longest longevity, actually boil their coffee all day and then drink it black. Why are they so smart? It turns out that the longer the coffee grounds are exposed to the water, the longer the polyphenols are taken up in the beverage, in the coffee you're drinking. So boiling it all day, as strange as that seems, is actually a really smart idea. Now the other thing that surprises people is you're drinking coffee for two purposes, caffeine and the polyphenols. The more dark you brew the coffee, like French roast or dark roast, the less polyphenols are in that coffee. So if you're going to buy coffee for roasting or for drinking, try to buy the lightest roast. Surprisingly, everybody thinks that the darker the coffee, the better it is, the more polyphenols, but it's exactly the opposite. You want light roast, Worst case scenario, medium roast, stay away from the extra dark roast like French roast and you'll be doing yourself a favor by giving your gut buddies more of the polyphenols that you're actually drinking coffee for. And for goodness sakes, stop putting milk in your coffee. It does not do a body good and it does not allow your gut buddies to get the benefits that they're looking for, and in turn, they'll help you. So, have a cup of joe, but have it black, folks. If you're really miserable, add my new favorite sweetener, allulose to it, add a macadamia or coconut creamer, or add an MCT creamer, 
and you'll get the smoothness you want with all the drawbacks. If you found this video helpful, I think you're going to love this one. Lo and behold, people who routinely donate blood live about seven years longer than people who don't donate blood. 